Have you ever wondered why modern players like Michael Brecker or Bob Berg or even Chris Potter get a really contemporary sound using just the same notes as the bot players? In this video, we're going to have a look at one of the techniques that they use to get this great sound. So, let's get into it. So the sound I was getting there is possible through a technique called triad pairs. Now it's really straightforward to do once you understand what a triad pair is and where it comes from and how to work it out for yourself. And there's so many different ones to try out, all giving really unique sounds. Triads are really familiar to everybody. We've got major triads, we've got minor triads, there's augmented triads and diminished triads. And that's really it from the point of view of triads. But when we put them in different combinations with each other, they create really unique sounds. So today we're going to have a look at the triad pairs we just get out of a major scale. And we're going to do it in the key of C for tenor players, but it really doesn't matter what instrument you're playing. You can follow along with this and have a go yourself. <laughs> And by the way, the backing track that we're going to use in this video and that you'll hear me playing over is available in SAT School. There's still a 14 day free trial. There's thousands of lessons in there to really get you going with your practice and all things saxophone. So how do we come up with triad pairs? So let's take the C major scale and we're just going to look at all the triads we can get within that scale. So we've got a C major triad a D minor triad, an E minor triad, F major triad, a G triad, an A minor triad, and a B diminished triad. And these are the triads that we create from any major scale. Now, if we take any two consecutive triads, so for example, the C and the D minor, what you end up with is six of the notes of that major scale. It's called a hexatonic scale. But we're going to use them in a really specific way. We're not going to use it as an up and down scale. We're going to interact between the two triads. We're going to play a bit of one, the C major triad, and a bit of the next one, the D minor triad. And we're going to bounce between them. And that's what creates this really unique effect that's called triad pairs. <laughs> Let's check out what each of the combination of triad pairs sounds like. Now, by combining them, we can get seven different sounds, seven different triad pairs just from one major scale. So first of all, let's have a look at this C major triad with the D minor and see what that sounds like. So to me, that's got a floaty vibe to it, that sound that it creates, those two triads together, a major triad with a minor triad, a tone above. So let's move on to the next pair. We're going to take the second triad of a major scale and the third. So in the key of C major, this is going to be a D minor triad and an E minor triad. And let's see what that one sounds like. <laughs> Now, to me, that one's got quite a melancholy sound. I quite like it, though. So let's move on to the next. We're going to take the third and the fourth triads. In the case of C major, that's going to be E minor and F major. So a minor triad with a major triad, a semitone above. Let's see what that's like. <laughs> Now 
Now, that one always reminds me of kind of Spanish music for some reason. I really like that sound. So moving on, let's try triads four and five. This is going to be F major and G major in the key of C major. <laughs> Now, I think this one's my favourite so far. It's got a really strong sound, and that's because it's two major triads, and our brains and our ears really grasp on to major triads. They're very melodic and very strong sounding. Could you hear how there was a definitive clarity between the two triads as I played in that little example? So next, we're going to move on to the five and six triads. Now, something to note here, we're going to get the G major triad and the A minor triad. So a major triad with a minor triad, a tone above. And this is exactly the same sound as the first one we did, which was a C major triad with a D minor triad. So you can see the triad types are the same, both major triads with a minor triad, a tone above. So from the point of view of the sound we're going to get here, it's going to be the same kind of vibe, but it may sound different in different contexts. So let's see what that one sounds like. <laughs> we got to the sixth of the seven possible triad pairs we can create out of a major scale. So next we've got the A minor triad, triad six, plus the seventh triad, the B diminished triad. <laughs> So to me, that's got a minor classical flavour to it for some reason. It just reminds me of that kind of thing. Sounds like bark a little bit. So finally, we've got our last triad pair, which is triad seven with triad one. So this is the B diminished triad with a C major triad. <laughs> And also with that one, I think that's got quite a classical sound, but it's more of a major Bach-esque sound from that point of view. Now you can't dive in and practice all these different sounds at once and always in practice it's good to give yourself a really specific task or sound and really work on that sound for a long period of time. So we're going to pick the one that I found strongest there which was those triads four and five. The two major triads a tone apart and in this case in the key of C that's an F triad and a G triad. So let's just take a basic groove from the key of C major. We're just going to take a 2-5 progression. So chord 2 of a C major scale is D minor 7 and chord 5 is G7. This is a classic groove and it crops up in jazz tunes and funk tunes, you name it. 2 fives a really common progression. So we're going to take that and we're literally just going to play these two triads over it. We're going to start off with a bit of the F major triad and then play a bit of the G major triad and we're going to bounce back and forward between the two triads. Now there's no rules here, you can spend as long as you like on each triad. The key thing to remember is rhythm. This is what's going to make these interesting, the way that you play them rhythmically. It's always the important thing when improvising, rhythm first approach and then you apply notes to that rhythm. And in this case we're going to apply the sound of these two triads. Now, once again, you don't have to play them in root position. You can play them in first or second inversion. You can open them up and play the notes across the range of your horn. You can even just play two of the notes and skip one of the others. You can do whatever you like with it. But the fact is, I'm always thinking about the notes of an F triad or I'm thinking about the notes of a G triad. So I'm always in one of those two triadic camps, if you like. So let's see what that sounds like if I just do some basic alternating patterns out of time with these two triads. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, what you'll see as you start applying these to different chord progressions is you'll get a very quick sense of which triad it is you're hearing. And it goes in really, really quickly. And this is for a specific reason. If we take a given chord, let's take this D minor 7 chord, and we look at the two triads, you'll notice that one of them contains just some basic chord tones. So the F triad is just the flat 3 of the chord, the 5 and the flat 7. But the G triad is full of upper extensions. It's got the 11th and the 13th and the root of the chord in there, but it's got a couple of those upper extensions. Now, if we look at it over the G7 chord in the vamp we're about to play over, then you'll notice that the G triad contains the basic chord tones. It's got the G and the B and the D, the root, third and fifth, but the F triad is full of upper extensions, the flat seven, the nine and the eleventh. So orally, they've got really unique sounds in a given situation. And that helps us really hear what we want to play. If this was just a scale that we were playing, it could take us a really, really long time to understand which note we wanted to play and hear our way through these notes. But dividing them up into these two really melodic, strong sounding triads really helps us play what we hear. So let's see what this triad pair sounds like in context. So I'm going to do a solo just over these two chords, D minor 7 going to G7, both from the key of C major, and I'm going to take the 4 and 5 triads of C major, this F and G triad, and literally I'm going to play a bit of one and a bit of the other. Now through this solo I'm going to start off really basically so you can kind of hear the two triads working together, and then I'm going to really mix them up and see what sounds I can get out of it. So let's have a listen to what this technique sounds like, and remember, this is all I'm doing through the entire solo. I'm either playing an F triad or a G triad. Nothing else, and I'm not thinking about anything else apart from trying to find some good rhythms and being creative with my ideas. So there you go, hopefully you agree that that's a really strong contemporary sound and one really easy to get into your playing. Now obviously if you were in a different key then it'd be relative to that key. So if I was in the key of E, the 4 and 5 triads if I wanted this particular triad pair would be A and B. Uh, so there's a bit of practice to do there. It's really worth doing lots of patterns just for facility. It stops you just playing everything in root position and lets you explore your horn. And if you add a bit of rhythm to those patterns when you play them, it makes them much more interesting. So if you enjoy this kind of content, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and click that like button. It always helps. And you can download all the stuff from this lesson by clicking the link below. Remember, there's a 14 day free trial still available. So now you know one of the secrets of the modern players. Have a go, check it out, work out some for yourself and try some different combinations. Remember, you can do exactly the same thing with melodic minor scales or harmonic minor scales, any scale type you want and develop these triad pairs to use in your playing. 
So until next time, take care and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.